What are some things that's hindering your relationship from having effective communication? What is hurting your relationship that's causing communication to go downhill anytime you have a difference? I want to talk about this on this segment of It's Scary to Be Married. I hope that you're the one. And that you are the prototype. First of all, let me preface this by saying that there are five things, I believe, that is hindering your relationship from having good communication. Uh, and at, and if you stay to the end of the video, I'm going to give you a bonus one that really is stopping your relationship from having the best communication as possible. But let me preface by saying this. First of all, when approaching your spouse or your significant other about an issue you might have, something that you feel like needs to be addressed, take the time to ask them, are you available? I think that's important. Just ask, are you available? Because we have so much going on. We have school, we have kids, work, and all these different things. We're working around a clock, like we're working 12, 13 hours a day. We have so much going on. And if you want to have a conversation about something that's bothering you, you want to start by asking, are you available? And if they aren't, respect that. You have to shelf it. Now, what I'm saying is don't shelf it for three weeks, you know, give them enough respect to say, can we talk later on tonight? So you're going to allot a, some time for that to have this conversation. So I want to preface by saying that the first one is be clear with what you say. This is important because I've struggled in this area because sometimes I feel like I could be too abrasive and I'm saying stuff just you know, out of frustration. And it's just like, no, I had to realize I had to tone it down a little bit, but at the same time, say what I needed to say and be clear about it. And what's going to help this is when you're clear about what you need to say is they're going to repeat back to you what you said. So when, when they repeat back what you said, now we have a, a clear understanding because now I, I've, I've heard you because I've repeated back to you what you feel. So say what you need to say, make it clear and don't beat around the bush. And that's going to help the relationship and communication. The next one is stay on topic. This one right here is when you not on topic. When you're talking about what happened last week, you're talking about why didn't you why were you late from picking up picking up the kids from school or why didn't you do this or why didn't you pick up your socks from last week? When really the conversation was about leaving on all the lights on in the house. That was the conversation. You're like, hey, we got this high electric bill. But when you're talking about all these other different things. You're never going to get anything resolved. So make sure you stay on topic. And I know it can be hard sometimes because a lot of times people like to be lawyers and they like to have their case and they ready and they want to talk about what happened last month and what happened last year because you keep doing the same thing over and over again. But let's stay on topic so that way we can have some resolve when we're having communication issues. The next one is don't interrupt and don't be defensive. Now, if your spouse or your significant other is talking to you about an issue, don't get defensive. And defensive is trying to cut them off. Well, I well, no. Well, first of all, no, just allow them to have that time to talk so they can get out everything that they need to. And then you respond accordingly. But when you're cutting them off, you're not even listening to what they're saying. And then they're going to feel like they're not being heard. And then you're both going to go to bed mad because Neither one of you felt like you made any progress. So instead of trying to be defensive, be more open to hearing what they have to say without judgment and being able to work on that. If it's an issue that needs to be fixed, fix it. But they got to be able to get everything out in order for for them to feel like they were being heard. So don't interrupt or don't be defensive. The next one is tone. It's all about the approach. Remember, we talked about earlier. How you want to talk about, are you available? The tone is you come off as so aggressive, so mad, so angry. And again, they're going to feel like they're not being heard. They're going to feel like, you know, I'm just so mad at you because you keep saying the same thing over and over again about what I'm not doing. 
So tone, when you're coming to them, make sure that you're 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 regulated. Right. I want to talk because I'm going to talk about that as well. Make sure that you regulate it. And if you are frustrated about something, you don't have to be punching holes in walls and throwing stuff around. You don't have to. The tone is going to help you in this process. The next one, number five is, are you regulated? I know this sounds, you wonder like, what does it got to do with anything? But are you sleepy? Did you eat? Like, you know, are you on the empty stomach or you only operated on four hours of sleep? And now they want to have this conversation that's really bothering them. But you might have not had those things in place. So it's going to automatically mess up the conversation that you have because you're going to mess around and say something that you didn't mean to say. Or it's going to get to a place where you're arguing because you haven't ate or you haven't gotten enough rest. And if you're able to recognize these things, if you did have a fallout and, you know, the communication was bad that day, you can come back to them and be like, you know, I was hungry. I didn't eat all day. Or I only slept three or four hours last night and we got into this argument. You're able to recognize those things. So when you're doing that, now it kind of brings everything. It makes it a little more settled now. Now you're able to really have that conversation because you recognize where you were wrong at. You're like, look, I, just, I wasn't regulated at all, you know, or I was thinking about something else instead of being focused on what we should be talking about. So are you regulated? So those are the five I want to talk about I, I, that I, we just addressed is not being clear with what you say. Stay on topic. Don't interrupt or get defensive. Your tone. And the last one is, are you regulated? Now, here's the bonus one. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I would like to know which one you feel like you struggle with the most in the comments below. So let's talk about it. Go ahead in the comments and talk about which one you feel is the biggest hindrance to good communication. The last one is put the phone down. There's nothing more disrespectful than when your spouse or your significant other is talking to you and you are scrolling or they saying something they 10 seconds into the conversation and you pick your phone up it's like you you're not hearing anything i have to say like is that more important than what we're talking about right now that's what's going through their head so make sure you put the phone down erica badu had a song called i can make you put your phone down <laughs> so can you you know make sure that you keep your phone down when you're having communication issues because by doing so, they feel like they have your undivided attention. When you pick up your phone, their attention is divided. So they might have missed out on a word or two that you said. You know, So make sure you put the phone down. Put it in the next room if you have to. But when you're having these differences and things that's hurting your communication, it's because the phone is in play when it shouldn't even be there in the first place because you're making that person a priority by giving them your undivided attention.